Hello world, it's Calcutron here with the 15th episode of our TI Basic tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering another data type. To review, a data type tells us how we should interpret a value and what operations we can perform on it. So we've already used the real number data type and the list data type, and we know that list variables are L1 through L6, as well as custom list variables which you can find start with this small l, so l, a, b, c. And we know that we're allowed to do item assignment and other list operations on these variables. So we can do one stored in list1 one at 1, and that's allowed, whereas if that was not a list variable, if this was, say, a real number variable, we'd get a data type error. The string data type we're going to look at today is one that we've already seen before. A string is just a sequence of characters, which can be letters, numbers, symbols, anything. And you can create a string by putting your characters between double quotes. So, hello world, or just hello, is a string, and so is one, two, three, four. So you might think that that 1, 2, 3, 4 is not a string but a number, but when you put it between quotes, it is interpreted as the characters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you're not allowed to subtract from it or store it into a real number variable, but you can store it into a string variable. So in order to access the string variables, you just hit the var key on your keypad, and then it's the seventh option on the list. So you hit vars and then seven and you get to this list of string variables. So unlike uh, the list variables, but like the real number variables, you're limited as to how many strings you can store at once. And you can only have 10, str1 through str0, and str here, of course, is short for string. So if we want to store into a string, we do it just like we store into any other variable, we type our expression that we want to store into the string, and then we put our store symbol. And now, if we ever want to get the value of our string hello, we can just go and find our string 1, and we get hello. So as far as operations go on strings, probably the most fundamental one, or the first one you'll usually learn about, is concatenation. And what concatenation means is you're just combining your strings by putting them on end with each other. So you take your second argument to the concatenation function, which is actually the plus, and that gets tacked on to the end of the first argument. So here we're saying we want to concatenate string 1 with our new string that we're creating, which is a space and then a world. And if we execute this, we get hello world. But it does not change string 1. So if we look at string 1, string 1 is still hello. So it's just giving us a new uh, string that is hello with world added on. And then we can store this back into string 1. And now, string one has become larger, and we can do it again. And it becomes hello world world, and again and again, and it becomes hello world world world. So it's important that we have this space at the beginning of the string we're adding. Otherwise, it would be hello and world smashed right against each other without a space in between. So to find the rest of our string operations, we're going to have to do a new thing. We're going to have to go to a new menu. And that is our program catalog. So you have to hit second and then zero, and you'll get to the catalog, which is a really, really big menu containing pretty much every command that you could need to use on the calculator. There are a few that aren't in here, but most things can be found in this big list. And so as you can see, just the section of things that begin with A takes up more than a page. And if you, from the top, 
go up, you'll scroll down to the bottom, which is all the symbols. And if you go down to the bottom, of course, you get to the top. So it'd be a real pain if we wanted to find something, say, in the J's. J's are uh, pretty far down in this. So what we can do is we don't have to press alpha because we're already put in alpha mode. We can just hit the letters on our keypad and we'll get taken to different points in this menu. So if we hit J on our keypad, or J, hmm. if we hit a different letter because J doesn't seem to be working, so that means there might not be any commands to start with J. So if we hit T, here we have all the commands in this menu that start with T. So there's, there's quite a lot that start with T. Uh, we're looking for a new command that starts with L, and that is this length command. So this is a new command that works with string arguments or a new function. So you take your function and you pass in just one value, which is the string that you want to get the length of. So if we pass in string 1, it tells us string 1 is 23 characters long. And if we look at string 1, that looks about right. So we can pass in things that aren't only string variables. We can also pass in a, a string literal, is what you would call this. So if we pass in the string yo, it's two characters long. So that's length. And our next string command is also found in the catalog. Almost all of the string commands, if not all, are found in the catalog. And that would be substring. So if you hit T, actually the fastest way to get to substring, even though it's in the S, is to hit T and then go up a couple times. It'll be either two or three times, depending on what operating system you're using. So we're looking for this sub command right here, and that's short for a substring, and this takes three arguments. So the first one is the string. So this can be something like calcutron. And then the second argument is the position in the string that you want to start at, and the third argument is the position in the string that you want to end at. So what it's doing is it's taking a, a substring by chopping out a small section of this string. So if we give it one, oh, and correction, so I said that the second, or sorry, the third thing that you give it is the final index that's actually the length of the substring you want to take. So we're going to say start at index 1 and take three characters. And if we run this, we get C-A-L. So strings are very similar to lists, except that they're a different data type and different operations are available on them. But in the same way, they're just really a list of characters instead of being a list of numbers. And so while we can't say something like string 1, string 1 at 5. We can't say that. We can, if we want to get a single character, take string 1 at 1, or string 1 at 2, or string 1 at 5, and it'll give us that part of the substring. So if we want to get, say, just the tron part of calcutron, what we'll do is we'll count where is the T. So it's it index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's at index 6. And it's four characters long. So there we go. We just chopped off a small substring, Tron. And then we could store that into uh, another string. So we could store that into string 2. So that's the substring command. That's I'd say so far we've been going in order of usefulness. Length is probably the most useful, and then sub is the next most useful. Although you might debate that depending on what you use strings for. So our next command is instring. And now I don't use this one too terribly often, but I believe the fastest way to get to it is to 
start at i and go down. So in string is going to search a string for us. So we'll, we'll do calcutron again. And it's going to tell us the position, the index of something we're searching for. So if we're searching for um, an a, we put a, and it will tell us what is the index of the first occurrence of a. And so that index is 2, which makes sense. a is the second letter in the string calcutron. Now, if we're searching for a longer thing, we can also search for like a l, and that will also show up. If instead we search for a z, something that's not in our string, what happens is it returns 0, which is not an index in our string. And so that's its way of telling us that it didn't find what we were looking for. Now, if it has multiple of occurrences of the same substring, for example, the string C, it's going to return the first one in your string. So looking for C, the first place you find it, going left to right, is an index 1. So it returns 1. If we were to change this to C U, though, it would tell us it's at index 4. So that is the in string command. And I believe that uh, that's all of the different string commands that we're going to learn today. So let's look at a little example of one way that we can use these to do an optimization. So something that you often do if you're making a game is you print out to the user whether or not they won or lost. So let's say we have a variable w, and if we won, it's a 1, and if we didn't win, aka we lost, it's a 0. So we can uh, prompt for w, and then we want to tell our user in text whether or not they won or lost. So we can just display you won, or we can display you lost, and then we can put this these in an if statement. So if w, and then if not w, display you lost. So if we run this ourselves and we tell it that we won, it tells us we won. If we tell it we lost, it tells us we lost. So there's an optimization that we can do with this using what we've just learned, and that is to condense it into one display and display u concatenated with one or lost depending on the value of w. So the way we're going to do that, this is pretty tricky, and it's just an optimization, so you don't have to do this if you aren't running out of space on your calculator. But if space is something you're concerned with, or you want to play the game of code golf, which is when you try to make the smallest program possible, this is a pretty useful way to optimize. So you always want to display the U part, so you put the U there, and then you concatenate onto that another string which is part which is from a substring of the different possible options so you could say you won you lost or you tied so like well we'll take out the tie and we can add that in afterwards and then we want to take a substring from this and we have to find that in the catalog and again, the quickest way is to go to T and then go up a couple times. And then we want to take that substring starting at either index 1 if we won or index 4 if we lost. And it might actually be easier if we switch the order of these two. So lost 1. And we need this space here, and that'll be apparent. So we want to go at 4 times W plus 1. So what this means is if w is 0, it's going to be 4 times 0 plus 1, which is just 1. So it will be starting at this l. 
And if w is 1, it will be 4 times 1 plus 1, and it will start at this w. And then we want to take four characters no matter what. So even though 1 is only three characters, we have to put on this extra space so that it always just takes four character chunks out of our string. So if we run this and we tell it that we won, it again tells us we won, and if we tell it we lost, it tells us that we lost. And let's go ahead and check how much memory this takes up. It takes up 43 bytes. And now let's go ahead and add another option. That should be pretty easy to do. So we'll say a 0 is a loss, a 1 is a win, and a 2 is a tie. And we can actually just add this option in and leave everything the same. So when we run this, it's if we hit 2, it's going to do 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 1, and we'll get 9. So it will start in that string at index 9, and it'll take 4, which will tell us we tied, and then the things we had before still work just like they did. So if we look at this, how much memory does it take up? It takes up 47 bytes. Now the equivalent So by doing this cool optimization, by concatenating strings and using substrings, we're able to cut off 61 minus 7, so I think about 14 bytes. If I can do math without a calculator, let's just verify that, 61 minus 47. Yeah, so 14 bytes are able to be saved, and if you're writing a really long program, and you can do a lot of these optimizations, and you have a lot of different options for what to display, or you have a lot of text before that, because if this had been something longer than the string u, we would have had to duplicate it even more times. So the byte savings on this optimizations can actually be pretty good. But anyways, I hope you uh, learned something about the string data type. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Bye-bye.